Cat and Moose podcast. I'm Cat and I'm Moose. This is a true life podcast where we explore the quirks of being human. These are our guttural new no, our guttural uh expressions. <sighs> Okay, Feels tell good. me what's going on. You walked in here with some heaviness. Well, I, I didn't really have any heaviness. I actually, I've really been struggling with the idea of the sheenus since our last <laughs> episode. And so... And well, so do I have I, something for you then? Well, I've got something for you too. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, this is not scripted. So. I was going to say, we want, uh, we had several people when we say that we, we have no idea. They didn't idea. believe us. They, they were like, there's no way. And we're like, no, we're just that <laughs> we're like, No, We're just that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we literally do not know what each other are going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, we don't know what each other is going to bring. So last night I was making notes on the most recent episode. I think it was episode 17. Mm-hmm. And um, I was making notes. And so I went to that's a dog dying in the background in yeah. case anybody. No, if not somebody really. could come scoop some dirt on top. I'd sure appreciate <laughs> it just to get rid of the whining. That, that's our little boy, Vincent. He is crying because I think he's hungry. I think his mom left the room. And that's oh, why. Is that what it is? Yeah. OK. Well, anyway, I was looking up um, Sheenus. And do you know that Sheenus dot com is parked no well actually it's just being held by godaddy it's not actually they took it's not actually taken like they want you to pay for it you can buy it from godaddy because they know that the sheenus is a thing (laughs) they know because they listened to the cat and moose podcast they were like we got to get on this right now so now i think the the value is at like seventeen hundred dollars or something like that So anyway, so I started doing more research and I found out that my my um, suspicions were true, that there are vacuums that go with the sheenus. That's not true. It is true. Maybe you made one in your little shed in the back of your house. No, and it's in the notes, episode 17, the astronauts in NASA or, or that are a part of NASA when they pee in space, there is a vacuum that actually drains all of the pee out of the apparatus they pee into. Right. But I listened back to that episode because I simply can't get enough of us. And, (laughs) and I I still don't understand, like clearly I am befuddled. There's a reservoir of piss that is just wallering around in basically around your folds and like that is a breeding ground for infection okay so i got you this oh what is it open it okay what is this well it's one of it's the it's a different it's an off brand it's (laughs) it's i can't open it's a generic sheenus well, you got to use your teeth or something. Okay, I'll I'll use my teeth. These I've paid thousands of dollars for these teeth. Wait, don't use the front ones. Uh. All right, all right. I am a whoa. What? Oh my god! So now that you oh. see what a sheenus looks like, do you understand that like there's no room for infection? Uh, this to me is a funnel of infection. Oh come on! And so you just rinse it out. But but what I mean, is it more work to rinse it out than it is to just pull your pants down and go pee? Well, here's what I thought when I listened to last episode. You kept saying that there was going to be infection in your folds and all these different things. (laughs) And I thought, wait, maybe this makes more sense if she thinks you wear it all the time. Is that what you think? Um. I did. I well. Do you I, think that slips into your underpants? Yeah, I thought this was just like a part of my hiking gear. No, you you use just it stick it up you, in there when you have yes! to pee. Yes. Oh, okay, that okay. makes so much more sense. Yeah, I was just thinking you were just holding it in there and letting that ninety eight point six degrees Fahrenheit or oh, one hundred and four if you have okay. COVID nineteen. You know, I, I was thinking it. Just, okay, but this makes so much sense. I'm gonna take a picture of this and. Well, take a Post picture of yourself our, using it. <laughs> wow. Hey, we're trying to grow our socials. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're growing our socials. We're going to go from three to one. Um, wow, that is really interesting. So 
if you're going to use this, will it come out like oh, the wish, zipper I opening? Wish. Can I? I feel like I should videotape this. Okay. I just said videotape. You did, because you're a child of the 80s. Wow. Um. Okay, so this is the sheenus. I'll go ahead and just own it. This is the sheenus. I'm thinking that this part goes up toward the buttocks to be sure to capture all of the liquid. So it goes right here. But if I oh my if God. I've got if I've got a opening in in my pants like a a male would, then this has to bend, which then closes off this cavity, which holds urine. Which would then produce a UTI. And I learned in class this week that women get uh, UTIs more often than men because our urethra is so short. Oh, my God. But men's urethra goes from the bladder all the way out the end of their schlong. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I'm just saying I still it is convenient as i think this is i'm gonna try it that's what i'm gonna do I'm yeah gonna try I, i'm just glad you don't realize you have to tuck that large thing into your pants the whole time i'm sorry for any men listening because you have to do that all the time i don't think they have to tuck it do they well maybe they do we should talk to a man and say hey do you have to tuck that in and then no it just like folds up or something well but this folds up but it doesn't like when this folds up it actually like puts a kink in the hose you know <laughs> like it puts a kink in the urethra right whereas with a man i wonder if it doesn't do that yeah All right. I, i'm so so did you get this from amazon or yeah that's amazing how much did it cost and uh, not enough and why is it a putrid color green well i there were options and i wasn't gonna pick a pink <laughs> like a flesh i just was not gonna do no you no, just no. thought it would be flesh colored for the grinch no i i mean like pink you know everyone thinks well if it's for a female let's make it pink right and i didn't want to do that so i i went with hunter green okay so i'm i'm totally tired of talking about wearing masks oh. not because i don't think we should but how is this even a freaking debate it shouldn't be a debate, but while we're speaking about it, can I tell you about the most brilliant mask that I've seen <laughs> that has been released into the marketplace? Please. Is the Kerry Washington mask. Why? Have you seen it? No. Okay. You know, Kerry Washington, yeah. you know, Scandal. Yeah. And you know, um, Little Fires Everywhere. No. Uh, it's it's Reese Witherspoon, Kerry Washington. It's based on a novel. It's like a, a limited series type thing. Okay. Anyway, Kerry Washington is this beautiful black woman. I mean, she's gorgeous. Right, she is. But she does this look where she she kind of goes like this, mm -hmm. and it kind of looks like she's smelling something stinky. Yeah. Stank face, a human facial expression identified by a flaring of the nostrils and raising of the upper lip, which is caused by 70s influenced funk bass playing. And so like the top like corners of her lip go like this. Yeah. And so she always is like kind of like this. And so somebody invented a mask that is just Carrie Washington's mouth going. That's amazing. Like that. I mean, that's it, a very it's, niche it's, group of it's people. It's really brilliant. I wanted to order it immediately. We need to put a picture up of it on yeah, the Instagram. We can. I like the one that says, uh, now you don't have to tell me that I need to smile. Oh, yeah. I like that. Do you get that ever? I do. No, I'm saying, do you ever have men say that to you? Men? Okay, let me start over. Okay. Not really. We're going to keep going. Okay. But you're walking down the street. Have you ever had a man say, you should smile? No. Oh, my gosh. You know this is a thing, right? I don't. Oh, it's like, you know, a lot of older men think it's cute to tell women they should smile really yeah and is it's this very like a, demeaning is this like a jeffrey epstein thing is this well no i don't understand like why why would an older man say to me hey you should smile because they're telling us what we need to do because apparently we're walking around with resting bitch face resting bitch face typically with reference to a woman a sullen or scowling expression attributed to or unconsciously adopted by a person when in repose oh got it okay so if you're walking down the street and you're not smiling they'll say you it happens smile. all the time i get it all every time i'm in a mall every time because i really it's oh, yeah. never happened to me and so yeah 
Now do you get the mask? I I mean, yes, I do. I I totally get it. I don't know if I'll get it. <laughs> but I get it. <laughs> like My I God, I am exhausted by me. By explaining that. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. I mean, I love you. Oh. What are you drinking that says babe on it? Um, it's something that producer Sarah gave me and it is rose with bubbles. Babe. Ooh. Yeah, it's delicious. Please sponsor us. Please sponsor us. Which speaking of sponsoring us. Hey Moose, do you know what you can do? What? You can save yourself that trip to the market, because that's what we call it. We go to the market. Instacart delivers groceries in as fast as one hour, even during COVID-19. No way. An hour? (laughs) They connect you with personal shoppers in your area to shop and deliver groceries from your favorite stores. Everybody needs groceries right now. It's not like a, hey, let's support these poor people's podcast everybody needs groceries go to instacart and use our affiliate link in the notes of our podcast instacart the place where for one hour somebody else touches the germs and you don't have to (laughs) um okay so i wanted to talk to you about something that happened in therapy this week oh i'm so glad you're going back to therapy like, I know you've told me this. I've been back. I know, but I'm really, really glad you're doing it. And I don't know if you saw the link I put in our last uh, notes <laughs> no, about, you, about you sleeping with your therapist. Oh, my God. Yeah. Or, or actually taking your therapist to bed with you. I think no, is how I No, wallowing around in bed with her right, is the way you said right. it. Well, the link I found, I typed into Google, uh, what if you want to sleep with your therapist? Hey, that's on you, not me. Well, it, it, well, I was doing it because I heard what you said about being in bed with your therapist. So I think that is on you. And <laughs> um, when I looked it up, I learned about this thing called transference. Transference. The redirection to a substitute, usually a therapist, of emotions that were originally felt in childhood. And it's this whole thing where... I've heard of the word. You're in love with your therapist. Well, okay. Tell us about it. I, I don't know. I'm not in love with my therapist, but. Well, I'm not either. I just happened to take just a Zoom to call be in with, with her. her. <laughs> Dear God. I ho- I'm glad she doesn't know I do a podcast. Yeah. I, every time I'm in there, when I say in there, I'm in the Zoom call, whatever that in means. In bed. <laughs> God. Um, I'm thinking like, I really hope she never finds out. That you do a podcast? No. I'm going to tell her. No, you're not. I'm 100% going to tell her. Why? I don't need that shit on me. That shit? Like, our podcast is not shit. I don't need I don't need that over me in therapy. Okay, okay. back to me being in therapy this week. Okay. So, um, I'm not even kidding. Speaking of Googling, I uh, last week I canceled my appointment. Hmm. And I... Because I didn't know what to talk about. And hmm. so, this week... I sat down at my computer a half hour before and I Googled, what if you don't know what to talk about with your therapist? Oh, what a great thing to Google. What came up? Well, it all these crazy things, like the number one thing you're supposed to ask your therapist is, have you been to therapy? And I'm like, shut up. Hmm. But then like all these other things popped up as well, but um, I didn't get anywhere. And so I was like, what do you? So then I was like, what would I write if somebody put that in Google? And then I thought, I'm going to sit with myself. It didn't work either. I literally like totally meditated. I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. Did you do another Sarah Blondin meditation? No, it was somebody else because I had like four minutes before it started. So <laughs> I, it was the four minute Oh, one. so you did like some serious prep work. No, I mean, I, I couldn't get in touch with myself. I see. So I get on the ther- I get on the call. And she's like bubbly and how are you? And so I kind of tried to piggyback off of the last one. And I basically just told her like, look, I've got these major issues that <laughs> uh, I need to shit or get off the pot on. Mm. Um, uh, But I don't know where to start. I don't know if I need to dive back into it. Cause you know, there's like, do you think you have to like, I don't think you should relive anything you've ever been through. That's been really hard, but I think you have to come to terms with some of it. Yeah, I don't think you need to relive it, but but I agree. Sometimes you've got to bring it up and you've got to talk about it and and not necessarily relive it, but 
but kind of be able to talk through here's what happened. Yeah. And I don't think that's reliving it. Reliving it would be legitimately like being in the same situation again. But I think taking yourself back there emotionally is not reliving it as much as it is. It is recounting it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, I think I'm always afraid of like the idea of reliving it, but she did the whole like, what age thing and i had to go back and talk to my damn self again did she bring out the scarves no scarves good um but she basically took me back to 13 6 and 13 are the ages so far and there was one point where my 41 year old self had my hands on my 13 year old self's shoulders again mm -hmm. and she had me tell the the girl the young girl we were just kids mm. and I just like broke down oh, that's so and sweet. it wasn't even about like something really hard. It was just in general, like how you receive things mm -hmm. at, at that teenage age. And I was just very angsty mm. when I was 12, 13, 14 and I wanted things my way and I wanted, I wanted to be heard and I never mm. felt heard in my family. Anyway, it was just really interesting because she was like, I just want you to tell that kid, like, we were just kids. Hmm. And I, like, it felt like, um, it felt sad. Oh. Well, because think about it. It's like, doesn't that phrase hit you? Yeah, we were just kids. It's like, it, it kind of feels like it. it's a phrase that kind of covers a multitude of things mm -hmm. i don't want to say sins because that's not really the case but it's yeah. like it feels like a phrase that kind of goes well that was really bad but you were just kids yeah you know so it does come with a bit of a of a weightiness a bit of a sadness of like wow that was a really terrible thing that happened and we were just kids and as children i'm learning this with my nephew especially um as children we're really resilient and we don't remember a lot right thank god i totally agree like thank god we don't remember some of the trauma and we do remember a lot of the trauma our body remembers our minds remember but i've been thinking about how my eight-year-old nephew has really been struggling with the fact that he feels abandoned or he has felt abandoned by his parents because they left him with his grandmother during COVID 19. and the reality is is that his mom and his younger brother went to Alabama to live with my mom during COVID-19 because their, their dad, my sister's husband is a first responder. He's uh -huh. a police officer. Right. And so they decided it's probably safer for us to go kind of be on a farm down in Alabama than it is for us to be in Metro Nashville and be around all of that. Well, my nephew really thinks that he was kidnapped and taken by his mom and my mom, his grandmother, and he he feels like he has been abandoned by his dad, not only kidnapped by his mom and his grandma, but also abandoned by his dad. Yeah. You know, and my family's really been carrying that like this is the worst thing in the world that has ever happened to this kid and he's going to be destroyed and need to go to therapy. And I'm like, well, I had a great childhood and I'm destroyed and need to go to therapy. So <laughs> that's going right. to happen regardless. Um, but it's been really interesting to see. And watching like him walk through that and also realize he's probably not going to remember a lot of it. He's going to remember bits and pieces of it, just like what you remembered from being six years old and being 13. But it's still a part of him. Huge. Right. And like, yeah. and I'm not saying that's trauma, but it's like, we don't always know all the different things that make up why we try to survive in this way or that way. Right. You know? Right. And that is what I have, I dug into with my therapist this week is I was like, I want to know the why. And I've been told multiple times by other therapists, like it doesn't matter. Like mm -hmm. I just need you to come to acceptance of, mm -hmm. of where you are. But for me, because I don't remember everything and I don't think there's some huge traumatic thing that I haven't uncovered. I'm not saying that mm -hmm. I just, I'm so curious about why, who I am. Yeah. I'm so curious about it. Which brings me to another point. Okay. Um, we uh, have a work acquaintance that acquaintance that posted something this week that I didn't really agree with. And I'm totally, I understand his point of view and I'm respectful of it. But I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Oh gosh, I'm probably going to offend whoever that acquaintance well, is. Okay, so um, this is what our friend said. He basically, I don't want to read it 
verbatim and call him out. But he was basically saying that he feels like the one thing wrong with the modern American church is um, the idea of like these, he calls them Christian-esque phrases and and ways to live and okay. he and he goes into talking about how he feels like in 2020 um the message is the most important thing is to know yourself like own your wantings own your desires trust your heart and he basically came back and was like <clears throat> that's not what we're supposed to be doing when jesus says deny yourself take up your cross and follow me hmm and then he goes on to say, like, is it important to know myself? Yes. Um, but that is secondary because otherwise we will fall into the pit of hell. He doesn't say that, but that's where my brain goes is like, mm. and I just, I, I see all of these friends and colleagues and this is a friend of mine. Like I totally respect his point of view, but I was like, are no, no. And I felt like it's really easy to go like, thumbs up, I agree, well said, get it, dog, mm -hmm. all of those things. Mm -hmm. When I just, here's the way I see it. I used to feel that way. And I'm not right or wrong. I'm just saying, I used to feel that way. And then the more I grew and, and started coming into healing and, and, understanding myself better, I realized like, no, God is in me. Right. He's not out there. Right. <clears throat> right. He or she, whatever you want to believe. Yeah, whatever you want to believe. It's it's the whole thing about namaste. Right. Like the God in me sees, sees the, the God, God in you. you. Right. You know, it's like we each have, and, and you can even look back at like Ayurvedic tradition or like look at like the chakras or whatever it is. It's like there's the there's the divine outside of you, but then it's the divine inside of you. Right. And there's a connection between the two of those, you know? And I, I think, I, I think a lot of, of people who call themselves Christians, I think that they take different scriptures or phrases or whatever from the Bible and they make them so literal. Yeah. And they don't take them in context. And they also don't take them in context of, the rest of the world and the rest of time and the rest of like the ancient wisdom that has come from other experiences. And it just, it just feels very sheltered to me. And I'm not yeah. saying I don't think we should believe what's in the Bible. I do think we should, but I think to take something out of context and just be like, this is the, you know, God's honest truth. I just think that's real limiting. And and I, I don't think that God would be happy with that. And I don't think he was happy with that. Like when Jesus was alive and in the flesh and on the earth, like he turned over tables because of it. Well, and that's where to me, the key word you just said for me is experiences. Mm -hmm. And I read a quote that a friend of mine sent me that said something like, um, you know, Christians don't want to have idols, yet many of them worship a book. Right. And again, I'm with you. I'm not saying there isn't truth in the Bible, but when I read that on Facebook, <clears throat> my thought is that's that doesn't fit for me. Right. And it doesn't, again, yeah, not right or wrong. That right. doesn't fit for me. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning behind that is I have done so much work in myself, but also in, in, um, recognizing, uh, what my faith means to me and mm -hmm. rec and I think I have a, a clearer pathway to God than I've me ever too. had. Me too. And my God, my relationship with God before felt like me to the sky, mm -hmm. you know, I will mm -hmm. reach him. I hope he hears me, uh -huh. that sort of thing. Uh -huh. And I've learned like, okay, he, he, she is inside of me. Right. There is a flame inside of me. Mm -hmm. How do I get in tune with that? So I have been frustrated, actually, the opposite of what our friend is, where I've been frustrated that, um, or maybe we actually agree to disagree, that um, one thing Christianity has missed is really um, uh, shepherding people's individuality yes and yes. and creativity yeah. and differences mm -hmm. and and push and grow and say like whoa look how god made you mm -hmm. whoa look over here how different interesting yeah. and and all of that like 
what if we did that? Because to, to say that God doesn't want us to look inside and be true to ourselves, in my opinion, denies the idea that God truly created us uniquely right. and beautifully. Right. 100%. 100%. So uh, like that, that's the missing piece for me in Christianity is, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just constantly supposed to deny myself, especially as a woman. Mm -hmm. I will continue to say, not me, Lord, but you. And, and instead of go, oh, aren't those combined? If God right. is in me, then we Yes. Right? Yeah. And holy and, shit. Well, and and I really think too, I think that when you label quote unquote Christianity, I actually think Christianity in and of itself is not the thing that does that. I think it's society. Yeah. I think it's people. Yeah. You're you right. You know, because like if you look at, you know, if you look at a a Franciscan friar, like a monk. You know, and you talk to them about these things like their perspective is very that's totally fair. balanced, yep. you know, and they're Christian. But you talk to yeah, I'm talking about the Southern church, right? right <laughs> kind of the evangelical Christian, right, like right. socioeconomic, like like that whole thing. And that's the thing that that I think is really frustrating because I feel like it gives Christianity a bad name. That's fair. you know, it's like, man, I don't want to associate with that, but I do want to associate with with the philosophies and the theology and the tenets of actual Christianity. Yeah, you know? I, I want to I want to behave and think and believe the way Jesus did. Yes, me too. Yeah, that too. is what I want to be associated with. Yeah. But for some reason, it's associated with politics. It's associated with society. It's associated with how, whether you wear a mask or not during COVID-19. You know, it's like somebody told me the other day that they said, I'm actually not wearing a mask because the people at my church don't think you should. Yeah. And I'm like, that that makes you look like such an idiot. Yeah. Like such an idiot that it's like because your church body is not wearing masks and meeting together in groups larger than 50 like you think that because you're a christian you shouldn't have to do that because you trust god for your health like give like that to me is absurd and i don't want to be attached to it in any way shape or form me either what about the that couple that came out waving those damn guns oh my gosh <laughs> I, I mean, mean could, well, first of all could you be more white privileged than that photo? Right. Yeah. And I then secondly, what is happening? Like, mm -hmm. first of all, look how she's holding the gun. If right. you're, if you're going <laughs> to claim to be a Republican, then get into the shooting range. Right. Right. Because Let's at least this look like you know what you're doing. Democrat could kick your ass. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I'm like, I can handle a gun 50 times better than that woman Me can. Come too. on. And then he came out with that automatic gun yep yep it's it's just disgraceful come on guys what in the world is ha when i saw that i thought i mean snl doesn't even cover that because this is funnier <laughs> like how can you make that funnier yeah yeah like my mom was telling me about this truck that she saw um she was driving to work the other day my mom's an essential worker and um she was driving to work the other day and she said she saw this truck that was waving four flags from the back of the truck oh boy and one of the flags was a white flag with a black AK-47 machine gun on it. Okay. Another flag was the Semper Fi snake. Like it was like the, the, um, I know Marine Corps about. snake that, you know, and then the third flag was the American flag, which okay. just, that is what it is. Great. And the fourth flag was the Confederate flag. Not so great. And it's like, what message are you portraying? Well, here is their motto. Okay. We love guns. <laughs> guns equal America. I'm surprised there wasn't a Trump flag. Well, there was a Trump sticker. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I, I am just like, I am so tired of labels and affiliations and this equals this. And it's like. Man, if we could all just agree on being really kind and and maybe take an eight month break from Facebook. <laughs> right. You know, right. like we just need to agree to that. Yeah, I think that would be really great. And and the reality is, is that it's really hard to take a mentality of 
leadership of I'm going to be kind, I'm going to be good to people, I'm going to do good things, I'm going to do good deeds, when when it doesn't, it, at least from my perspective, it doesn't feel like our leadership is doing that at all. Like we're not being led by example Mm -mm. by anybody, you know? And so then it's like, okay, like how do you expect the people to be anything other than confused if how they're being led is, is just by dissonance, you know, it's by let's, let's talk about what we disagree upon, you know, whether that's on a press conference or, you know, on social media or whatever, it's just, man, it's so sad to me because like, I think, I truly think people are good. I think people are amazing. And I think that it, it's just, it's so sad that like, I, I feel like a lot of us are just aimless out there running around without any direction. And the direction we're, we're being given is very, um, it's just negative. It's, it's, uh, antagonistic. It's, I, I just, I think it's terrible. Yeah. All right. So Moose, um, you know that a couple of years ago I bought a pontoon boat. You did. Yes, I did. Um, and it was one of those things where I had a dream in my life that I said, if I'm successful enough in my career that I can buy my mom, the Jeep of her dreams, Mm -hmm. like I will have made it like that's something that, that for years and years and years has really been important to me. So this particular summer, I, I hit that place in my career where I had, enough savings in my emergency savings account. And I was making enough money that I thought I can, I can buy my mom the Jeep of her dreams. And so I did. Um, and then I thought, well, you know, it's still all about me because I'm not the perfect human. I want something for myself too. So I decided to buy a pontoon boat. Yeah. And it comes with a trailer that has like a, a hitch. That's like, you know, it's like you have a, a trailer hitch on the back of your car. That's got a ball on it. And then the trailer like, sits on top of the ball and it latches in and then you carry it down the road. Well, I was with, uh, one of our, thank you for that explanation. Like I, I followed you. Did you really? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, do they call that a ball and a ball and chain? (laughs) No, a ball and, um, I, I don't know what that's called. I think it's hook and balls, hook and balls. (laughs) Anyway. So, um, in my yard, I tried to attach the trailer to a different vehicle than the vehicle I'd brought it home with because okay. that's what we were trying to do, a friend of mine and I. And so um, so we attached the thing and we're like, okay, like we've got this. We're, we're awesome. And so we leave the house and we drive away and we get um, on Old Hickory Boulevard and then we get on I-65 to get on the interstate and we get on the on-ramp and, and on this particular on-ramp off of Old Hickory – going to 65 north there's a few pretty significant bumps Mm -hmm. so as we're driving with this giant pontoon boat behind us on a giant trailer that's on this giant ball and sleeve whatever it's called (laughs) (laughs) we're driving along and the trailer bounces off of the hitch no it bounces off of the hitch and so the trailer dives forward because it's it's kind of top heavy so it dives forward sparks are going sparks everywhere sparks are going everywhere we're on an exit ramp so cars are like you know so like is trying the boat to, going everywhere well, well the boat was going as fast as we were going oh dear god but we hit the brakes so the boat hit us the boat hit us in the back of the car, so it made this massive dent oh in my. the back of my friend's car. The actual car. boat, because the, actual the boat, bottom part of the Because the trailer, trailer was rah, like along the concrete or whatever. And so then, this is like National oh, Lampoon. It, I mean, it was it was ter- it was terrifying. It was terrible and it was terrifying. And so anyway, so the boat hits the back of the car like four times. It's like. <laughs> doo, my doo. And we were just like, oh, shit, like, oh, my God, what do we do? (sighs) And so we pull over as far to the left as we can get because we were on the left side of the exit ramp. And and we pulled over as far as we can get. And we're like, what do we do? Like, like, literally, the, the trailer has come unhitched from the SUV. It's like several hundred, if not thousand pounds. So it's not like we could just lift it back up. Yeah, right. And and put it back on the SUV. And plus, we were scared to death. We had never driven with a boat on the back of the SUV. And so we called 911. And oh this police God. officer shows up and he's like, 
yeah, I can't really do anything for you. I mean, I can kind of stand here and I can divert traffic. And we were like, but isn't this an emergency? And he's like, no, it's not an emergency. Like you're your just trailer, you're just stupid. <laughs> you know, it's like your, your boat and your trailer just came off your car. Like you've got to figure it out. Like that's not what we do at, at the Brentwood police department. Although Brentwood, I feel like it is what they yeah. should do. <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of feel like they should. Um, so anyway, long story short is we ended up calling this tow service that ended up coming and, and helping us get the, the boat back on the, the trailer and so on and so forth but while we were waiting a good samaritan pulled up behind us oh that's cool and this woman got out of the car and she was uncapped <laughs> wait, wait wait give me the whole picture like she she did not look like her clothes had been washed in several days okay. her hair was very um not styled it was very frizzy and pulled up and she kind of smelled of just like general alcohol no just uncleanliness like mm. just not not real clean and she got out and she goes what have y'all done and we were just like oh we were so gosh. traumatized we're like we don't need another person to tell us how stupid we are right you know so she's like what have you guys done and so we tried to explain the situation to her and so she looks at my friend, who is a woman and very well endowed up top. And well, she, I hope not down below. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I just want to be clear. After talking about the sheenas, you know, <laughs> people might think we're still on that topic. Okay, I got it. She, up um, top? Yes. Yeah, so she's very well endowed up top. And this woman says, well, she goes, I would offer my husband's assistance. My husband is in the car back there, but I cannot ask him to come up here until you put those boobs away. Oh, my God. Said that to your friend. Said that to my friend. I will not let him come help you until you put those boobs away. Because she would lure him in with them. Who knows what the woman was thinking? So and I'm like, I just picture your friend grabbing her boob. You know how we do that, like toss. Thing? Yes, yes. Where, where we push down our. But how do you put them away? It's not like, oh, excuse me, let me. I was going to say, something? let me go get my ace bandage in the back of the car. And, and put those boobs away, like wrap them up. Oh and the, we were astounded. So not only were we traumatized by the fact that the trailer had practically totaled the car, like on top of that, there's like all of Brentwood, half of whom we know, of course. driving by like honking, going like, hey, everybody, are you guys okay? Or maybe she was honking at your, they were honking at your well-endowed friend. Maybe, we don't know. I mean, maybe so. Apparently she had them hanging out there and needed to put them away. <laughs> Can you believe that? So anyway, long story short, this woman's husband never came out to help because my friend could never put her boobs away. Oh, wait. No, he never He came? never got out. And so I just told my friend, I said, just go sit in the car. I said, go sit in the car and I will get the help of the husband and we will try to get this sorted out. And so long story short, my friend just sat in the car traumatized, worried that her boobs were the cause of this man's entire sin oh you my know and, and and you know the t truck came and got the trailer hooked up and we got it to the ramp and got it put in the water and then you know had to go to therapy for 14 years you know <laughs> but but i couldn't believe that this woman in all seriousness said i would let my husband help you if you could put those boobs away oh can you my believe that God. no i can't believe it I, I mean i can't believe it because where the lights brighter the bugs are bigger <laughs> However, <laughs> let me say this. I just picture that woman getting out of her truck and yelling at her husband. You stay back here. You stay I see what you're there. looking at. Uh -huh. I see you looking at those women's boobs. You keep your eyes closed the whole time. <laughs> and why in the world did she need to pull over? You know how there are people that just need to pull over? And why did she need to? I'm the person who pulls over. Well, I'd, I would pull over too, but I wouldn't pull over... And, and then absolutely, like, judge someone. I would yeah. pull over and go, hey, how can I help you? But instead, she's like, well, I'd help you, but you've got to put those titties away. I mean, away. just let, let me shame you right, right before I help you. Right. As if I'm not in enough trauma and in despair on my own. Can you believe it? <laughs> she was an angel in disguise. I don't think th an angel of the devil. Isn't that from the Bible? An Ezekiel? Yeah, I think so. The angel of light and kindness is really beelzebub amen my brother also remember schizophrenic brother uh -huh. 
he uh, had a, a time frame where he was talking to BB, and we asked him who BB was, and he said Beelzebub. Oh, and I was like, this ain't a mental illness yep. anymore. This, this is, is real. Yeah, this is spiritual warfare. That's right. Look at you throwing out hashtag spiritual warfare. <laughs> Um, hashtag Dutch sheets hashtag this present darkness hashtag all my early Christian reading so I have a story that is also a side of the road story okay. that is not my own and I'm pretty sure the person that this is about listens to the podcast so is it the same person that eats the placenta no 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 no, no. I, I'm still traumatized by that did you see that article i sent you i i've read all the articles i get it was I called just, placenta encapsulation i just I, I it just is something that i have not figured out how to embrace yet i just made the connection that the friend you were talking about the story i'm about to tell is her sister oh okay all right so the story goes like this and if you are listening starts with an s um <laughs> If I embellish any of this, just don't tell anyone. But as I remember the story is she led worship at a church in um, in Southern California. She lives in Northern California and she was- Well, now we're gonna know who she is. No, we're not. It's either Jesus culture or Bethel. Oh dear God. Oh my gosh. It is not. Um, definitely not that spiritual. Okay, so she's leading worship and she gets in her car afterwards. It was a beautiful church and everyone loved her, etc. She's on her way home on the interstaters. They call it the freeway. The freeway. Which I, I have thoughts on what the differences are. Like the 101 versus I-65. Yeah. Interstate versus freeway. Yep. Okay. Anyway, so she's on the freeway and in front of her is this truck that has a bunch of ladders on the top. They're tied down on top. And she's driving, minding her own business, and she's like, man, that isn't safe the way he's got those tied down. And so, like, people are literally going past him and honking, like, dude, you're not they, okay. Things, not okay. things are loose up there, right? Yeah. And so um, she's, you know, just trying to not get hit or whatever. And sure enough, she gets out of the way, but that ladder comes off and hits the car behind, oh. behind the the thing but our friend saw it happen mm. and was like well i'm gonna pull over because i was a witness mm -hmm. so they pull over to the left hand side which is a little chaotic when you're on the left hand and um several cars pull over cop finally comes and uh our friend is is kind of given this guy the share the riot act you know and like what are you thinking like your ladders you know because it, it, it was so dangerous yeah. luckily nobody was hurt but so she's just you know F this, F that, because she was so pissed. It's not really who she and is. And this is one of our worship leader friends. Yeah, but dropped a couple <laughs> Fs, right? Yeah. And so the 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 um the police officer comes over. He pulls up. He's on the very end. So he's like, I need everyone that's here to hand me your licenses. Mm -hmm. So everyone's gathering the licenses, kind of passing them along. And the woman that got hit was in between the guy, the ladder, and our friend with the S. And she <laughs> happens to look at the license and see who it is. And she goes, oh, you're... So-and-so. Yeah. And she goes, yeah. She goes, you led worship at my church this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and here she had just dropped a few F-bombs, <laughs> throwing it out. So I just want to honor all of the worship leaders who like to drop bad words. Yep. Every yep. once in a while. We um, love you. Yes, we love you and are glad to recognize that we have fellow humans who are listening to our podcast where sometimes we say four letter words. I mean, rarely. But sometimes. Yeah. Special thanks to our producer, Sarah Reed. To find out more, go to catandmoosepodcast.com. Production.